What's good, Flesh fans? So I held a Twitter poll about what genre my next video would be on, and the winner was games. So me being the counterculture icon that I was, I did choose a game. Just not a video game. Gotcha. On a technicality. Speaking of polls on Twitter, you can vote on these polls if you follow me. Also if you don't follow me, but if you follow me, you'll see the polls as they happen. So today we're going to be talking about a staple in American recreational culture, Monopoly. I actually love this game. Most of the time when I want to play, everyone says, nah, 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 because they're afraid of like three hour games or something. Also, I make a lot of sneaky deals and people end up calling me Satan all the time. It's funny because I never usually win anyway, but it's fun. For all of you not in the know, Monopoly is this game that's about rolling dice and destroying your enemies. It also takes about like three hours because people don't know how to properly play the game. Everyone's got their own house rules that totally screw with how long the game's supposed to take just to give an artificial sense of uh, balance. And even without these house rules, someone once played a game of Monopoly for uh, 70 days. That's insane. However, even though this is probably one of the most popular and well-known board games in the world, there's actually a lot of shady history behind it. And shady like social network shady, not like Salem Witch Trials shady. Back in 1903, a woman named Lizzie McGee made a game called The Landlord's Game. The game was actually one of the first boards to have an infinite path as opposed to the linear and limited paths of its counterparts. Also, fun tiny fact, it was made to send a political message against monopolies. See, this lady, Lizzie McGee, isn't just any old lady. She was a writer, a comedian, stage actress, feminist, and engineer. She was one of the first women who had a patent, and also at some point she tried to uh, put herself on auction as a slave to make more money, but okay, moving on. Um, also, she got married at 44, which is pretty old to get married, especially at the time. She was also a Georgist. She believed in the, and this is from Wikipedia, so you know it's true. The economic value derived from land should belong equally to all members of society. So the main idea behind this, and the main idea in the landlord's game, is the use of a land tax as opposed to income taxes, purchasing taxes, etc, etc. In the Georgist view, these other taxes are unfair and inefficient because they can increase income inequality. The theory goes that since the people who own land are privileged, they can be the ones who help pay for society. This is also because in Georgism, natural resources, including land, are viewed as common resources, and that common resources belong to everyone. So whoever owns the land also has a fee to pay back to everyone, i.e. taxes. Also disclaimer, this is like a really big brain topic, so sorry for any inaccuracies. I'm not a Georgist myself, although Georgism sounds pretty interesting. I think I got the big picture stuff down though, so back to Monopoly, or rather the landlord's game. So there are two rule sets, anti-monopolist and monopolist. The monopolist rule set is kind of just like standard monopoly. Try to own your land and use rent to uh, destroy your enemies. The anti-monopolist rule set is different in that there's land tax, aka the single tax, and you win the game by doubling the original amount of money for the poorest player. The game itself is supposed to help teach people the benefits of Georgism and the reduction of income inequality. So, in 1903, Lizzie files a patent for this game, and they try to publish it in 1906. She actually approaches the Parker Brothers in 1909. It gets rejected. Eventually, other people learn about the game, and it spreads. People teach the game to other people, change a bit of the rules, and so on and so forth. Even different names get attached, like Monopoly, Finance, and Auction. Our girl, Lizzie, gets hitched and repatents her game, updates it with named streets and new rules. She approaches the Parker Brothers again and is told the game is too political. Meanwhile, a dude named Dan Lehman plays a version of the Landlord's game with his friends, the Thuns, in 1932. The Thuns couldn't patent their game because uh, it was Liz's patent, so they copyright their rules, including community chess, paying to get out of jail and railroads. The game is called Finance and it gets published. Then, it gets sold to Nap Electric for $200. Then, okay, and this is all, again, straight from Wikipedia, so it's the truth, also a little complicated. A dude named Pete, who's friends with Dan, teaches a woman named Ruth. Ruth moves to Atlantic City and makes her own version. Friends of Ruth then show it to a dude named Charles, who then introduce it to another dude named Charles. We'll call him Charles II, aka Charles Darrow. Of course, you think he's not super important, but turns out he's like the golem of this story. 
So Charles II finds out about the game and tries to publish his own version called, wouldn't you know, Monopoly. Charles II refines his game, adds the Go Arrow, some of the most famous graphic elements, and then he copyrights it. He submits it to the Parker Brothers in 1934, and they say, nah. Later on, the brothers hear about the game selling really well during Christmas time in 1934, so they contact Charles II, and then they buy it. April 1935, they learn Charles II didn't actually, um, uh, make the game com completely. So, like the golem he is, and like the Saurons that the Parker Brothers are, they ask Charles II to sign something saying that he made the game. He comes up with this bogus story about how he was unemployed and making the game in his basement, and how he submitted it for the Parker Brothers, and then the Parker Brothers said there was like 52 things wrong with the game, and yada yada yada. Very rags to riches. Very like, oh my god, it's such a cute story. So then, as a strategic move to protect themselves, the Parker Brothers buy out other versions of the game, like Lizzie's Landlord's game, and the finance game by Dan. So while Charles too is raking in millions of dollars, becoming the first millionaire game designer, and getting royalties, our girl Lizzie gets $500 for a game and no royalties. And the worst part is that our girl Lizzie doesn't even know that our game was bought for strategic reasons. And she gets so excited. Until she finds out and she goes to the press because at the same time, the Parker brothers are again reinforcing this idea that Charles II made this game by himself in the basement. So Lizzie, angry and also old now, goes out to the press and tries to expose her truth to the world. Eventually, nothing happens, and the Parker brothers publish some of her games just to make her happy, but they fade into obscurity and she dies in 1948. She was a widow, had no children, and barely anybody knew about her making this game. Apparently she was known at work as the elderly typist that just talked about making board games. And someone did the math and she probably spent more money making the games than she got from that $500 payment, so uh... Of course, her story does get exposed 30 years later during a legal case over another Monopoly-related lawsuit thing, and now people know, or at least have the ability to know. It really sucks because her story is basically actively suppressed by the company that publishes that game. It's unfortunate because the spirit of the original game is completely lost. It's a game that rewards monopolies, which is just a perversion of her original idea. I mean, like, come on, look at this new thing. Socialism Monopoly? Come on, guys. You just made an edition of Monopoly for people who like to own the libs. The idea of Monopoly is just reduced to fun and games that subtly encourages the ideas of capitalism as acceptable. It erases the message of, oh, maybe there's another way to structure how we tax things. No longer is there any real, tangible lesson of income inequality. It's just another item warped by capitalism into whatever can make it the most money, whether it's Fortnite, Game of Thrones, or Shrek. And to be honest, I didn't even know if these editions of the game existed, I just typed in random pop culture things and just assumed they did. And they do. It just sucks that this happened to McGee. You can tell that she wanted to spread her ideas and get credit for them. You can say that Monopoly isn't all hers, I would agree, but I definitely think it's the product of more people than just Charles too. Like all the thousands of people who played it, spread it around and added their own rules. And even if you don't think that she deserves any of the credit, the situation just doesn't feel right. Let's pour one out for our homie Elizabeth McGee. May she live on in our memories as the original creator of the Monopoly concept. Not this golem ass dude who made millions off of the work of other dozens slash hundreds slash thousands of people. Also big thanks to my dudes Wikipedia for helping out with this info. You should check them out sometime. Wikipedia.org Thanks for watching. Stay cool. And stay fleshy.